I'm Doug Parker with Cruise Radio, and this is a tour of Carnival's Mardi Gras. If you're watching this on YouTube and want to jump to a certain deck or area of this ship, you can just click the time code below. All right, so Mardi Gras was supposed to be launched in 2020, but because of the pandemic and then dry dock delays, her maiden voyage was pushed to July 31st of 2021. Let's take a look at some of the Mardi Gras facts. This is the largest Carnival Cruise Line ship to date at 180,000 gross registered tons. It has a guest capacity of 5,282 and comes in at 1,130 feet long. This is also the first North American cruise ship to be powered by liquefied natural gas, which is a much cleaner burning fuel. Mardi Gras is divided into zones. It's kind of like Royal Caribbean's neighborhood concept. The zones on board are Grand Central, the French Quarter, Summer Landing, La Piazza, Lido, and the Ultimate Playground. Now, you embark Mardi Gras on Deck 6, which dumps you right into the Grand Central Atrium, but we'll start our tour down on Deck 4, which is the very first passenger deck. Now, if you want to get technical, Deck 3 is a limited traffic area, so the medical center is down on Deck 3, and it's where you'll go to disembark the ship in ports of call. Otherwise, there are no staterooms or anything on Deck 3. All the guest staterooms are from Deck 4 to Deck 19, and of course, there is no Deck 13. God knows the cruise industry doesn't need any more bad luck. You'll find a variety of cabin options on Deck 4, including those family harbor staterooms, which are specifically designed with the needs of a family traveling with kids. These staterooms offer a privacy curtain and access to the family harbor lounge, which is a spot where kids can go and hang out, play video games, fill up on soda if they have the soda card, and take advantage of that 24-hour ice cream machine. Who doesn't want that? Carnival's kids program, Camp Ocean, and Dr. Seuss's Bookville, they can also be found on Deck 4. Not much else on this deck with the exception of staterooms, though. Which takes us up to Deck 5, which is also mostly staterooms, with the exception of part of the Cloud 9 Spa on the forward-starboard side of the ship. We'll talk about the spa for a moment here because you actually enter the spa on Deck 6, but all the treatment rooms in the thermal suite is down one deck. Now, in the thermal suite, you're going to have a mineral pool, a steam room, sauna, and those hot heated tile relaxation chairs that feel so good and makes you want to go to sleep. Now, if you have a Cloud 9 Spa cabin, you have access to this area if you do not have a Cloud9 spa cabin, they do sell limited passes to this. And I believe she told me when I was on board, it was 50 passes. Uh, mine was $179 for the week. But if you're a couple, you could buy a couple's pass and it's a little bit cheaper. You can also buy these passes in advance before your cruise because they do sell out. Now it's up to deck six. This is where all the action starts to happen. At the front of the ship, you'll have the Mardi Gras Theater, which actually spans two decks, deck six and seven. This venue hosts the playlist production shows, the family feud game, which is really funny, by the way the Military Appreciation Gathering, and Short Talks. Now, the main entrance is actually located up on Deck 7, but there is a passageway to enter on Deck 6 over by this spa, which we mentioned a couple of minutes ago that the reception area to the spa is on Deck 6. All the services are down one deck. There's also an ADA-compliant elevator that goes down to the thermal suite and treatment area for those who need assistance. Just opposite of the spa is the Cloud9 Fitness Center. This is your basic gym that you'll find on almost every cruise ship with a row of cardio machines, also upper and lower body equipment, and free weights. Now, crowd-wise, I found going really early in the morning was the best time to avoid the rush of people, especially on those sea days. Leaving the gym, you'll come across the first bank of forward elevators on Mardi Gras. There are three different elevator banks. You have the forward and midship. Each of those have eight elevators. And then the aft bank has six elevators. Continuing our walk along Deck 6, we hit the Punchliner Comedy Club. On most Carnival ships, the Punchliner shows take place in the Limelight Lounge. So it's nice to see Carnival actually giving the comedy shows their own space. When you walk out of the Punchliner Comedy Club, you see this big, beautiful mural on the wall showing both the original 1972 version of Mardi Gras and then the new ship, allowing you to see just how much bigger the 2021 version of Mardi Gras really is. In fact, the old Mardi Gras was 27,000 gross registered tons. The one we're on right now, 181,000 gross registered tons. So a massive difference. You'll also find the ship's coin here. And on the side, there's a QR code. If you scan it, you can find some really fun facts about the old 1972 Mardi Gras. Right next to the mural and right across from the Punchliner Comedy Club is the Piano Bar 88. This is your typical piano bar that you'll find on any Carnival ship. It's a little bit larger, though, than, say, the ones you'll find on a Vista-class ship. Not by much. This was a popular spot that was really hopping very late into the evening. Now we come to the Grand Central Zone. This is the real heart of the ship where the vessel really comes to life. 
You'll find the atrium here, although it's a little different than what you'll see on other Carnival ships. Instead of the atrium being in the center of this ship, here it's located on the starboard side. The space actually serves almost as a separate theater at nighttime with several different types of shows taking place here. During the day, it's much quieter. These big LED screens, they go away, and it's just three stories of nothing but glass and a connection to the ocean. A really, really chill place. The Java Blue Cafe, which is the coffee shop on Carnival, and the Central Stage Bar, which on other ships is just called the Atrium Bar, they're also located in this zone, along with their candy shop called Cherry on Top. Walking aft from Grand Central, you'll find yourself entering the French Quarter Zone. This space is home to everything New Orleans. Now, almost everything you find in this zone is new to Carnival, including the very cool Brass Magnolia Bar, which features live music just about every night of the cruise. Just past the Brass Magnolia is the Flamingo Dining Room. Also, fun fact, the Flamingo Dining Room was on the original 1972 Mardi Gras. There is also another dining room. It's two stories, and it's on the very back on the same deck. This dining room, the Flamingo, was used for any time dining on our sailing, though that could vary from sailing to sailing. In the middle of the French Quarter is the Fortune Teller Bar. Think of this as the scary cousin of the Alchemy Bar. Mixologists here don't just make cocktails, they create potions. And be warned, just like at the Alchemy Bar, these are potent drinks that'll knock you on your butt if you're not careful. But it's a chill spot, and there's a place right across from there with plenty of seating. You have couches, and an acoustic guitar player is there sometimes. The French Quarter is also where you'll find Bistro 1396 by Emeril Lagasse. This is an a la carte venue with dishes costing anywhere from 3 to $10 a piece, like the red beans and rice were 3 bucks. The jambalaya was around $5. The barbecue shrimp was somewhere around 10 It's a hybrid, though, of quick service and table service. You walk up, place your order, you'll receive a number, and they bring the food to you once it's ready, kind of like Panera. There's plenty of seating here as well, both inside this restaurant and across the way, there's a series of tables and booths. Walking aft from here, you'll find a spiral staircase that goes up to Deck 7 and Deck 8, and on the other side is Carnival Kitchen. This space is where Carnival chefs, they offer hands-on cooking demonstrations for an extra fee. They do a little of everything in here, from hands-on rolling sushi, barbecue, and of course desserts. You'll want to check the Hub app to see what they are creating before you sign up for a class, and you also want to make sure you don't have a food allergy to anything they are cooking. The prices for this class, they depend on what they're cooking. And if they have like a wine pairing, that would be a little more expensive, obviously. Just behind Carnival Kitchen is the aft elevator bank and also some stairs if you're feeling a little extra motivated. The aft main dining room spans two decks and it's called the Palm Restaurant. On our sailing, set dining was offered here at 6.15 and 8.30. The line to get in here can get pretty long while people wait for the doors to open. So I like to arrive about five minutes late. I mean, why waste time standing around when you can just do something else and then come in and walk straight to your table? This is also the dining room where the chef's table is located and where they serve sea day brunch on, well, obviously sea days. Moving up to Deck 7, we'll start forward in the Mardi Gras Theater. Again, there's two entrances here, but most people use Deck 7. It's also pretty much impossible to talk about Deck 7 unless you talk about the casino, which on this ship is absolutely huge. If you want to enter the theater on Deck 7, you have no choice really but to walk through the casino which is massive. Seriously, it's one of the biggest uh, casinos I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Some parts have a strong smoke odor. Other parts seem to filter the air pretty quickly. The smokiest area was definitely the casino bar area. It was a popular place for people to light up on our sailing, although Carnival has been modifying and changing their casino smoking policy over the past month or so. So I advise you to check out Carnival's website to see what the current one is, because I don't want to give you wrong information. I do know that outdoor smoking is allowed at Bar Della Rosa, which is on Deck 8. That's the starboard side. And also Deck 17 aft on the starboard side. You can smoke outside there as well. Throughout this large casino, there are several exits which lead you to the Grand Central area. Remember, that's where the atrium is. One cool venue here is the Grand View Bar, which uses lighting effects to make it look as if the wall is one giant waterfall. It's a lighting trick, but I suppose if you had enough to drink, you probably could think water was coming down the sides of the walls. Some Poseidon stuff, you know. Another new to Carnival feature is the stadium-style seating on Deck 7. It starts right behind the sound booth on 7 and goes up to Deck 8. If you've ever sailed a Fantasy Class ship before and been in their main theater, that's what it reminds me of, the way the seating is tiered. Walking forward, you have a lot of Carnival fun shops, followed by the Alchemy Bar, which is huge on this ship. It's probably at least double the size of an Alchemy Bar, but also an expanded seating area. Off the Alchemy Bar is the Limelight Lounge. This place hosts to trivia and various activities by day, which turns into a nightclub after dark that goes well into the night. 
Just past the extra seating for the Alchemy Bar is the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. This is the specialty restaurant on board Carnival for $38 per person at the time of recording. One thing they added to this bar that I really love was a horseshoe bar at the entrance. On other Carnival ships, the Steakhouse Bar is located inside of the Steakhouse, maybe can seat four people max, but this one has plenty of seating. I would say probably a good 20 people could sit here. You also do not need a Steakhouse reservation to grab a drink here. Just across from the Steakhouse is the Carnival Dream Studios, which is part of Pixel's Photo Gallery. This is where you can sit down with a professional photographer and plan out those really fancy photo shoots. And there's that spiral staircase again that takes you up to deck eight or down to deck six. And because it's so sparkly, it also makes an awesome photo opportunity. On the very aft of deck seven is the upper level of the Palms restaurant. It's basically the same layout and dining area as deck six. You're just eating at a higher elevation. Up to deck eight aft, you'll find the summer landing zone. The very back of deck eight is where you'll find a sprawling area called the patio. There's lots of comfortable seating and one of the ship's four pools back here. This one is great, especially early in the cruise, as it takes a little while for people to actually discover there's a pool back here. Everyone's kind of just, you know, used to gravitating towards that Lido pool and thinking that's their only option. On the starboard side aft is another new to Carnival venue. It's a bar called The Watering Hole. It serves up some refreshing drinks made with fresh fruits like berries and watermelon. And over on the port side is where Guy's Pig and Anchor serves up a complimentary lunch. It's usually open for two to three hours each afternoon, but you'll want to check the Hub app to make sure that it's open and you catch it at the right time. Now, the summer landing zone also extends inside where you'll find the main Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brewhouse space, including the bar and stage where bands play at night. Across from this is the Heroes Tribute Lounge, which is dedicated to past and present military personnel. And in the same space, you'll find not one, but two ice cream machines located in this area. Late at night, this area seemed very popular with the teens, with them swarming the ice cream machines like vultures. Another change that Carnival made with Mardi Gras was put both the guest services and shore excursion desks back here on 8. This was smart for two reasons. First, it means you don't have to scream at the guest services staff to be heard over the loud music. You know, if you're having an atrium party on other ships or, you know, loud music in there, you sometimes can't hear each other speak. This kind of eliminates that. And second, these areas don't impact the flow of guests in the atrium. It's worth noting, too, that although Carnival is doing the fun times digitally now on the Hub app, you can still go to guest services and pick up a one sheet, which literally lists everything going around the ship for the day. I think it's called What's Happening. And if you do, for some reason, need to go to guest services, you can actually use the Hub app to make an appointment so you don't have to stand at an endless line. That virtual queue thing really helped out a lot through the whole sailing, actually. Walking forward from here, we come to Rudy's Sea Grill, another new to Carnival specialty venue. As of October 2021, it'll run you $38 per person to eat here. And it's about a two-hour dining experience. And I have to say, it was the freshest seafood I've ever had on a ship, hands down. Outside of Rudy's, you'll see the staircase again. That'll take you down to deck six and seven. If you keep walking straight, you're in another zone called La Piazza. This is where you'll find all things Italian, including two grab-and-go food venues, Piazza Panini and Pizzeria del Capitano. There is seating here both inside and outside of the ship, and the pizza place is jumping all hours of the day. I was talking to a crew member in the pizzeria, and he was telling me that they were making up to 1,000 pizza pies per day. So they're slinging some dough out there. Bar Della Rosa is a nice little bar that specializes in Italian drinks and coffees. The bar has a nice size outdoor seating area too. So there's a bar on both sides. This is also a smoking area out on deck eight. We mentioned that earlier. So you can go to the starboard side out of the lanai if you want to light up. Now across from the bar is Carnival's very popular Cucina del Capitano, the Italian venue. On other ships, this has a complimentary lunch and dinner runs $15 per person. However, on Mardi Gras and for the foreseeable future, Carnival isn't charging for this restaurant. So you can have a dinner in here and not have to pay anything. Same thing with Chibang, which we'll talk about here in just a couple of moments. But here in Cucina, guests could actually order selections from the main dining room as well as the usual Italian menu. We went on formal night and I ordered the lobster in here. It actually worked out well because there was a like 45 minute wait to get into the main dining room. And we were actually no one knew about the dinner being served in Cucina. So we walked in, got a table, no lines, no wait. This is another one of those things that people don't really figure out until later on in the cruise. But you know it now. So eat there early. 
Continuing forward, you walk through Pixel's photo gallery where you can pick up those photos you've taken during the cruise. And then you end up at the Grand Central Atrium because remember, it spans deck six, seven, and eight. For dining in this area, you'll find Bonsai Sushi and Bonsai Teppanyaki. If you'd like to do the whole teppanyaki experience, make a reservation as far in advance as possible. Now, continuing to move forward, we come to sort of a fork in the path. You veer to the port side and you'll find the Havana Bar and Havana Retreat. While the bar is open to anyone and features Latin bands and dancing late into the night, another hot spot here, the Havana Retreat is only available to guests who are booked into the Havana staterooms. Now, opposite of the Havana area is Chebang. This is another new-to-carnival venue. This place is perfect if half your party wants Chinese and half your party wants Mexican food, as the menu offers the best of both worlds here. As I mentioned earlier, you can also order items from the main dining room in here, so there's really something for everyone, and best of all, it's totally complimentary. Forward of Chebang, there's a lot of staterooms, including those forward-facing balconies. Decks 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15 are all stateroom decks, so we'll jump right up to 16. The front part of deck 16 is nothing but staterooms, but then you come to the next zone, which is the Lido. Obviously, this is the main pool area, but the first thing you come across here is a variety of food options. To the right, you have Street Eats. That's the food truck concept with three different kiosks that are serving up different small plates of food. Then you have the Seafood Shack. There is a charge for that, whereas the Street Eats food truck concept, that's all complimentary. On the other side is the Blue Iguana Cantina, which serves burritos and tacos for lunch and also a killer breakfast burrito in the morning. They even serve them on Debark Morning if you want to grab one for the road. Anchoring the Lido deck is something new to Carnival, the two-deck Red Frog Tiki Bar. So on other ships, you have the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar on one side and the Red Frog Rum Bar on the other side. So you take those two and you have the Red Frog Tiki Bar. They also serve up some really good handcrafted hard seltzers here as well. Now, as you make your way inside the doors, this is the Lido Marketplace, your typical buffet setup with a decent amount of seating. Aside from the standard buffet offerings, there are more kiosks in here like Sea Dogs, Swarma, which is the meat on the wheel, and Gelato. Walking aft, you have the second part of the buffet section that actually mirrors the first part. But the good food, that's walking to the very back of Deck 16. You'll have another new to Carnival venue, Big Chicken, which is from NBA superstar Shaquille O'Neal. He has a restaurant in Vegas, by the way, too. You'll find breakfast and lunch here with a lot of fixings on the side. We swung by a couple of times, and I can tell you they have an awesome Nashville hot chicken sandwich, also a really good honey chicken sandwich for breakfast. I was a big fan of this venue on our sailing because they serve breakfast really late if you want to sleep in, and you can get breakfast up until I think three o'clock or so. So it's uh, pretty generous with their times there, a good place to kind of mop up the night before, I guess you could say. Now that you have your sandwich, you can walk over to the other side and hit up the Tide's pool bar, grab a drink there, and also another set of ice cream machines. The aft pool back here has two hot tubs on either side. There are loungers back here for sun lovers, but the roof extends pretty far out. So if you don't want to sit like directly in the sun, but still want to sit back here, it's fairly easy to find a spot in the shade. Up to deck number 17. Deck number 17 has a whole lot of lounge chairs that overlook both the tide pools on the aft and the Lido pool towards the middle of the ship, making it a good place to be if you want to just watch the action, but not maybe dive right into the middle of it. There's also a smoking area on deck 17 aft towards the back as well. You'll find the second level of the Tiki Bar up here, and right behind it is Guy's Burger Joint. Deck 17 is also where the teen area is located. It's called Club 02, which is ages 15 through 17, which is really nice and has a loungy feel on board the ship. On the starboard side is Circle C, which is for the kids between ages 12 and 14. And then just beyond that is the Warehouse Arcade, where I I spent a lot of time myself, not going to lie. Forward of the pool on 17 is just more staterooms. Now, deck number 18 is essentially split in half. On the aft portion, you have the ultimate playground zone. This is where you'll find the miniature golf course, basketball court, jogging track, and more. This is also where you check in for Bolt, aka the roller coaster. If you want to know more about Bolt, including how much it costs and what the instructions are in place, I'll link our video we did in the show notes. Now, you'll also find waterworks back here with three slides, including one free fall type slide and two twisty slides, plus one of those ginormous dumping buckets that the kids seem to love. And, uh, well, so does some 
of the adults. Deck 18 forward is the adults only Serenity deck. This is where the rest and relaxation spot is for the 21 and up crowd and those who want to escape the music by the pool and see the activities that happen on the Lido deck. The Serenity on Mardi Gras differs from the ones on the Vista class because there's a decent sized pool up here as well as two hot tubs. You'll also find the Serenity Bar and on Sea Days, Fresh Creations, which is a uh, made-to-order salad station. There is a lot of space up here, but if you're trying to get that water connection, don't expect much in the way of shade. There are a few clamshells and those awning-type umbrellas over the pool, but that's about it for shade. All right, now let's head up to deck number 19, which is also broken into two parts. Directly above deck 18 Serenity is deck 19's Loft 19. This area features lots of loungers and about a dozen cabanas. It's similar in many ways to the Havana Retreat. The big difference is that just like the Havana area can only be accessed by guests staying in Havana staterooms, Loft 19 is only available to those guests staying in these Excel suites. Well, that or who are willing to pay 500 a day or 2000 a week to rent a cabana up here. Now, that sounds like a lot, but the cabanas do hold up to five guests. So if you're traveling with a group of friends and you split the cost, it's really not that bad, especially if you have a couple of sea days on your sailing. And right now, this ship is running about three sea days per sailing. As much as I love this space, there's not a pool up here, which is weird because there's a big giant hot tub. And it's also weird because if you're in the hot tub and you're down on Serenity looking up at Loft 19, it's like an aquarium. So be careful what you do in the Loft 19 hot tub. Making our way back about midship, high above the ship, is the ropes course. This is really cool because it's a almost a miniature zip line that goes out over the side of the ship. So when you're on the ropes course, you get all geared up, and your very first platform is you swing yourself out, and you kind of go from, I'd say it's probably about 50 feet, 40 feet from pole to pole, and you're kind of just dangling over the side. It's really cool. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. There's also the safe way to go. Also, they do close this area down if the winds are blowing 45 knots or higher. That's also for the Bolt roller coaster as well. Now let's move to the back of the ship where we save the best for last. Bolt, the ultimate sea coaster. This circles the back end of the ship. And to access this, you have to go to deck 18 and take the stairs up to 19. There is no ADA elevators up here, so you'll need to take the stairs. And if you can't take the stairs, well, the better vantage point is down on deck 18 anyway. All right, well, that'll do it for our tour of Carnival's first LNG ship, Mardi Gras. A couple things to know before you go. First and foremost, definitely download the Hub app. Even if you do pick up a what's happening from guest services, times and venues do change. We actually showed up at the wrong place a couple of times because the one sheet from earlier in the day said one place, but the, of course, Hub app is uploaded and updated in real time. So that's the more accurate. Also, make your reservations early for specialty dining. Uh, if I could turn back time, Cher and I would have booked teppanyaki, the steakhouse, and spa treatments before I even got on the ship. And finally, study the deck plans. If you made it this far in the video, you're on the right track. This ship is so big and such a departure from other carnival ships that things may not be exactly where you're used to them being. We talked about Guy's Burger Joint being on deck 17 and not by the pool on this ship. So it's little things like that that'll keep you ahead of the game. All right. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise News Today and the Cruise Radio podcast, both which can be found at cruiseradio.net. Now I turn it to you. What do you think of Carnival's Mardi Gras? Is it too big, just right? You prefer the smaller ships? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. It's the best way you can say thank you. I know your time is very valuable, and I appreciate you taking a couple of moments to watch this video. The proceeding was a production of Cruise Radio. For more accurate and dependable updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit cruiseradio.net.